Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here, with the end of 1 Samuel, chapter 31, and it is the death of Saul. Let's just read it. Um, starting in verse 1, Now the Philistines fought against Israel, and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines and fell slain on Mount Gilboa. Then the Philistines followed hard after Saul and his sons, and the Philistines killed Jonathan, Abinadab and Malchishua, Saul's sons. The battle became fierce against Saul. The archers hit him, and he was severely wounded by the archers. Then Saul said to his armor bearer, Draw your sword and thrust me through with it, lest these uncircumcised men come and thrust me through and abuse me. But his armor bearer would not, for he was greatly afraid. Therefore Saul took a sword and fell on it. And when his armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he also fell on his sword and died with him. So Saul, his three sons, his armor bearer, and all his men died together that same day. And when the men of Israel who were on the other side of the valley and those who were on the other side of the Jordan saw that the men of Israel had fled and that Saul and his sons were dead, they forsook the cities and fled, and the Philistines came and dwelt in them. And really, that's the end of an ungodly life. At the end of an ungodly life, there only awaits fear, despair, and ruin. That's what happens when you turn away from God. That's what happens when you disobey Him. Sometimes it doesn't appear that drastic. Like you don't lose a kingdom, lose all your children, end up committing suicide. Sometimes it's not that dark. But a life lived without God, a life lived in opposition to His principles, will inevitably ruin itself. It will inevitably collapse in on itself. Maybe not dramatically, maybe not in some human way. I have no doubt that some non-believers die very prosperously. Everyone else in their family is left alive, including their spouse. There's money left behind. The, you know, they're still living in their homes fairly comfortably, even though they're sad their loved ones departed. At the same time, a life lived without God is still a life wasted. It's still a life lived for yourself. It's a life or a life lived for temporary things, even if it's something for helping other people. Everything down here is going to waste away at some point if the help that people receive isn't spiritual in some way. It's good. It's not bad. But it doesn't give life. It doesn't result in eternal life. It doesn't result in an eternal change. There's only so much that can be done down here, and everything that does happen down here is going to pass away with this world. And then when, and when you actively rebel against God, usually things go far more south than that. Usually things end up in much worse shape, worse shape kind of like what happened to Saul. It's, and when you talk about someone who's fallen away from the Lord specifically, someone who's walked away from Christ and then started living in some other way, that would be the worst case scenario of all. Not just a, you know, a... A, a good person that simply never gave their life to the Lord, or a bad person who simply never gave their life to the Lord, but someone who once knew the Lord and then walked away. Generally speaking, those people are the most wretched and the most miserable, and I do speak from personal experience there, unfortunately. It's not a pretty position to be in. So, give your life to Christ and keep living for Him. Endure to the end that you may be saved. That will be the ultimate message for the end of this particular Bible lesson. So thank you guys very much for watching. I love you, and God bless.